Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I would like to show you how you can build your own RFID door opener. Now for this project, first of all you're going to need an RFID reader and this is an RC522. You will also need either the card or the little key fobs that work with it. You'll need an Arduino board. Um, pretty much all the Arduino boards will work. You're going to need a logic level converter and that's because the RFID card reader is 3.3 volts and the Arduino is 5. Then also you're going to need a relay to activate the door lock solenoid and then you're going to need a door lock solenoid. Now I've ordered one and it hasn't come in yet but um, I'll be able to show you how this is all done. The only thing you'd have to do that I haven't done is you'd run the power for the solenoid through this and then connect the grounds together to a 12 volt power source. That's it. Simple as that. But you need the relay to control the door lock solenoid. And then also we have an LED here which is optional. You don't need this but for the tutorial it uh, works really good because you can see when this is working and then it also it'll turn red if you put a card that's not recognized onto it. And it's just an RGB um, LED and I'm only using the red and the green. I'm not using the blue. All right, well, let's get into it. Um, first of all, we'll go over how to hook it all up, which is not very hard at all. So you got your RFID card reader, the RC522. And you can see there's eight pins that are on here. And we're only using seven of them. We're only needing seven of the pins. Now, first of all, take your ground pin and connect that to the Arduino's ground. And, um, well, actually, no, you'd want to run that to the ground. So this will run to the Arduino, but we've got the ground connected to the ground on the logic level converter. Then take your power, connect that to the uh, low voltage side, the 3.3 side of the logic level converter, and put that to the, the voltage end. It should be labeled something like VN, something like that. And then um, on the other side, on the high voltage side of the logic level converter, run that to, to 5 volts on the Arduino and then run the ground to the ground. And then also run your 3.3 volts off of your Arduino board to the low voltage end side on the logic level converter. And then that also connects directly to the RC522. Now, <clears throat> for the rest of the pins, First off, um, I'm using pin 2 here, and that goes to the diode, and then pin 3 goes to the diode, and yep, yeah, 2 and 3, and let's see what else do we got running here, um, this one isn't hooked, or okay, I've got one hooked up for the blue too, but we're not using that. I forgot to take that off. Sorry about that. Next, we got on pin 7 of the Arduino. We're running that off, and then that goes to the, the in on the relay. That's what activates the relay. And then make sure you got your power and your ground hooked up to the power and ground on the Arduino. And you're just running um, the 5 volt power and then the regular ground. Next, we've got pin 9. Now, pin 9 off from the Arduino goes to the high voltage number 1, the input number 1. Then off the other side, on the low voltage side, the LV1, we're running pin 9 to the RST pin on the RC522. That's the reset pin. Next, we got pin 10, and that goes to high HV 2N, and then that runs out to the RFID reader, and that goes to the SDA pin. Then we keep doing the same. Pin 11 runs through logic level converter, and that goes to the MOSI. Then pin 12 runs through logic level converter, 
and comes out and goes to the MISO pin on the RFID reader. And then pin 13 off the Arduino board comes into the logic level converter and then out the low side and that goes to the SCK pin on the RFID reader. Pretty simple. If you didn't catch all that, um, I'll have a schematic on the website. Just uh, look in the description below and you'll find a link for that. And uh, also I'll have a picture of the um, the uh, solenoid door lock on there so you can see what they look like. And they're fairly cheap to get. Uh, the one I ordered was only like $8. It's not very much. And um, well, with that, let me demonstrate it working. First of all, I've got here, this one's actually programmed in, so this is a good one. So when I put it up there, that turns green saying it's good, and you can see the LED on the relay came on. Now I've got this set so it'll only stay on for about five seconds. The uh, solenoid opener that I ordered, it's 12 volt, but it recommends not to keep it activated for more than 10 seconds, otherwise it'll overheat it and burn it out. So I figured five seconds is more than enough time to open the door. And after I hook this all up to the door, I might even knock it down to like two seconds just so that the solenoid lasts longer. But uh, that one there was good. And here's another one that's good that I got programmed in. And you can program as many of these into it as you have. I mean, if you really want to take the time, you could program a hundred of them in there. It's going to be a big sketch, but you can do it. Uh, so far, I've only got two programmed into it. And... I'll probably program maybe one or two more to keep the spares. But um, here's one that's not programmed into it. You can see the relay did not activate and the LED came on red to show you that it's a bad card. And here's another one. It's the actual card version, not the dongle. And see, it's not programmed in there. And when we get over to the sketch in a minute here, I'll show you how to program these in. And I also have it built into the sketch um, if you have it hooked to your computer and run the serial monitor it'll actually tell you the ID of the card so that you can program it into this so that's all all there is to it so I don't think there's anything else to go over with the circuit like I said if you didn't understand anything I will have the schematic on the website if you got any questions uh, leave them in the uh, comments below otherwise leave it on my Facebook page and I'll uh, try to get back to you as soon as I can and help you out if possible. So with that, let's jump over to the computer and we'll take a look at the, uh, the sketch and how to modify it, program these in. And also I'll show you, you know, if you wanted to take the LED out or some other modifications you can do. So we'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I've got the sketch brought up here. And uh, to get this sketch, just simply go to my website. And of course, there's a link in the description below. And you can uh, copy the sketch from there and then just paste it right into your Arduino IDE. All right, well, let's get into it. Well, first, what we got here is this is a list of the pins that you have to connect up to on the RFID reader. Now, I was using an Uno, so these are the pins we used here, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then it shows which corresponding pin on our RFID reader you use. Now, if you're using the Nano, it's the same pins, but if you're using the Mega, you'll have to switch the pins. As you can see here, here's the list of the pins, and the Leonardo is different, and uh, the Pro Micro is different. So, if you're not using the Uno or Nano, just make sure you go through and... Uh, Use these pins that are listed here. Now, next, we're including some libraries, so make sure those are in there. Now here, we're defining two pins, and that's because these two here change on different boards. But uh, if you're using the Uno or the Nano, just leave that 9 or 10. Otherwise, if you're using the Mega, you know, the RST, this one here would be a 5. So just change those if you're using a different board. And this is just initializing the RFID reader. Now here is where we're actually 
actually putting the numbers, the ID number off the card. And I have it built in here, so when you first load, load the sketch up, load it into your Arduino, and have it connected to the computer still, start the serial monitor, and then scan your card, and you'll get the hex number, it'll come up on the screen. You can just copy that and paste it in here, or just type it in on your keyboard, whatever. But this here is the RF number one, ID number one. So that's my first card or dongle. This would be your second. And if you're adding more, like you had three, four, five, you know, your next one, just copy this, paste it below, change the next one to three, paste another one, change it to four. That's all you got to do for those. And then just make sure you put the corresponding IDs in for each card. And you s just scan your first card and put that X number in here. Scan your second card, put it in here, third, fourth, and so on. It's pretty easy to do. Next, uh, we're just defining which pins the uh, LED is on. And then we're defining pin 7. That's where we got the relay. So if you use a different pin for the relay, or you're using different pins for the LED, just change that. Otherwise, if you're not going to use the LED, you can just comment these first two out or just delete them. And um, then just delete the other parts of the sketch that turns the LED off and on. And there's not much. I'll show you that in just a moment. Then, of course, we have the serial begin, and again, once you get your cards read, if you're not using it anymore, you can go ahead and delete that or comment it out. Otherwise, you can just leave it, and you can leave the LED stuff in, too. If it's not hooked up, it ain't going to hurt nothing, and it could be there for if you wanted to add it in later. So, Next, we're defining our pin modes, and the red, green, of course, output, and the relay is going to be output. Next, we got a void dump byte array. Don't change anything in here. Leave that. Change something, this ain't gonna work. Next, we got the void open lock. Now, this is what gets activated when a good RFID card or dongle is placed over the reader. So what we're doing is we're writing the, the LED green to high, and we're writing the relay to high. Then I've got it set for a five second delay you can change this. Just do not exceed what the, the recommendation is on the, the solenoid door lock you're using. And there should be information on it. If you got no information, you scavenged it out of something, five seconds, you should be safe. And just make sure you're using the right voltage. If you scavenged it, who knows? It could be 3 volt, 5 volt, 10 volt, 12 volt, 100 volt. Who knows? Um, you kind of have to play around with that yourself then but otherwise um, if you want to order one there'll be links to where to get them where I ordered mine and it's like eight dollars it's cheap and then after the five seconds we're just writing the LED green to low and we're writing the relay to low all right now here is where it's looking for the cards and then if it scans a good one it sends it up here to the void open lock so if um, you're only using the two cards you can just leave these alone, or excuse me, not them two there. Leave these first two, my bad. This is just scanning for the cards. Leave those alone. It's right here. It's reading, and it's if the first card number you put in is detected, it goes to the open lock void loop above. This is for the second one that you put in. Now, if you only put one in, just delete this. But I'm pretty sure if you're going to do this, you're going to have more than one card. Now, I've got this set up for two cards right now. If you want to add a third card, you just simply copy that. Come down here, paste it in, and then change that number right there. Since we left off at two, if the next one you added was called three, change that to three. And then, of course, you probably want to change the comment there to three so you know and that's all you got to do to add more cards otherwise if you're only using the two you don't have to do anything here um, and you can add as many as you want you want to put a hundred cards into this thing yeah go ahead there should be enough room I mean we're only using 18 percent of the memory right now so you should be able to put a crap load of them in there if you wanted to like I said I'm gonna be adding I'll probably have four or five for mine when I'm done so I can have some spares hidden in case I lose my key ring or something. 
then this here, if um, you're not using the LED, once again, you can just delete that section there. Otherwise, what this does is you've got to take and you copy this here and put it in there. And then it also, it's doing an and, so it's checking both. If neither one of those was detected when it was scanned, what it's doing, because right here it's not equal, it's not equal. And if none of your IDs that you have entered into the, the sketch is detected, it's writing the LED high for two seconds and then low, so that you know a bad card was used. And all, once again, if you're adding more cards, you just take, copy this, over here, hit space, paste that in, and then your next card, backspace would be a three. And then if, so on and so on. So if you did another one, just paste that in, change it to four. Next one, change it to five, and so on. That's all you gotta do. Otherwise, if you're not using LED, you can delete this, or you can just comment it out so that you still got it in case later you wanna add the LED. Um, I'm actually gonna be removing this for mine. I just mainly put it in, this, in the sketch and on the circuit board for this tutorial to demonstrate so you can see it working. Um, otherwise, you'd have to drill a hole to run it through because, I mean, your circuit tree, everything's going to be on the inside what the lock is being used to keep somebody out of. So you'd have to drill a hole and stick the LED through. Otherwise, you could even use a buzzer on here if you wanted to. It'd just have a little 5-volt buzzer that you could hear through the door, and, you know, oh, it's a bad card. So it just buzzes for like two seconds. Or you could hook up a speaker and change this to the tones because your Arduino will do tones and just use a little 8 ohm speaker. And there's lots of different things you could do so you had some kind of, you know, signal or alarm to know that, oh, I'm using the wrong card and you're not sitting there wondering why the door's not opening. Actually, I think that's what I'll do. I'll put a little, I got a couple little tiny speakers and that's probably what I'll do is hook one of them up. Otherwise, that's all there is to it. I mean, this sketch is not very complicated at all. And when I first got these cards here not too long ago, I went on YouTube and done some research, and there wasn't a whole lot of information out there. Most of the people didn't really tell you a lot. And most of the videos are just demonstrations of this working. I actually did finally find one guy who did a pretty good job. Um, his code was open source. I robbed a few parts of it and rewrote some stuff and changed it quite a bit. Um, but uh, as a matter of fact, if I remember right, I got that saved on my watch later list. I should probably give him a credit, so I'll throw a credit down in the description below, and you can check his video out too if you wanted for some more information. So um, once again, to get the code and pictures and parts list and where to get any of the parts you don't have, just click in the description below, take him to the website, and there'll be some more info on there as well. And uh, if you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Might want to consider subscribing because I'm doing videos quite often now. I'm trying to do at least one every other day. And uh, some days I'm trying, I'll maybe get two on in one day. But I'll be putting up multiple videos every week from now on. So consider subscribing. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. Have a great day and have fun building.